So, let's get back to the radio. And as you can see, it's going right in between the two seats. And I'll show you what I made for it. Bolted up here in the back. And then, you can tell where I have it bolted to the floors down here. What I'm going to be using now for my bracket, I'm going to be using this one inch square tubing. I'm going to be making basically a box frame for it. Um, so let's get at it. What I have to do first is to remove the top portion of these mounting brackets so I could get to the to the base of it and that's where the holes are so when I get those disassembled I'll continue on from there Here's the update for my radio installation. Uh, every one of those antennas are hooked to a different radio. 
they're just not there for show. There'll be one more antenna added right in the very back. I'm going to mount it. Uh, let's see where I'm going to mount it at. I'm going to mount it off that pole, the center pole for the tire hoist. I'm going to reconfigure that tire hoist where I could use it for different for different projects. But let's walk through the radials here. This particular radio right here on uh, this antenna mast is what they call the uh, XM607. It has a tunable, you have to go on the base of it down here and you'd have to manually tune the radio, tune the antenna to your radio frequency. And uh, if you see the picture that I imposed on this, you could see what I'm talking about. But uh, I've seen pictures of these trucks that have radios on them, and they install the antennas on the boxes back here. Uh, one favorite spot is usually right here. Just that section right there and if you look right here there's hinges right here these are fold down sides so if you ever had to use a truck to fold it down then those antenna masks would be in the way plus I was looking at mounting it right here at this first section but it gets in the way of the canvas so, I installed it right there. So anyway, this antenna right here um, goes to a CB radio. You could take the one of the crystals in here on the lowest frequency setting, and you can actually take a screwdriver and tune that down to where it goes into the CB range. Uh, the reason I did that was because these antennas here, this one and that one, this front one goes to my R442 receiver. That's just a receiver only. And that one up there goes to my uh, RT246. Uh, we'll go inside and show you how what I did in there. Um, but I ordered extra antennas and then when I ordered the antennas they were the wrong size as you could see the base here I forgot what the dimensions are I probably will superimpose the dimensions but the base here where it screws in is a lot larger than what this this one is right there is so I said, now what am I going to do with two extra antennas? So then I ordered the base because I read up online where you could actually tune those as CB radios. But that, that's how I have mounted on the front bumper. And as you can see, I got it going out there with the grommet. And then my other CB antenna, I got two CBs, and then the other one is right right there. That's a civilian antenna there. And then I got this mount here. Uh, I also have another, what they call, sugar scoop mount, which is this mount right, just this portion, just right here. And, uh, hindsight I should have put this the other one I had the spare one in place of that tin one because this one right here when the antenna moves you could see a little bit of flux weight flux oh, shit I can't even talk see a little bit of movement right here and eventually that will lead to cracks metal fatigue but I don't drive with these on down the road. Uh, I, t I separate the antennas right here. 
and uh, just because I don't want to hit power lines or break them. But I bought extra antennas for those. So those are the, the antennas I got. Let me open up this door to get more light inside the truck. And then what I do with this, how I rot the wires, came out through here and then under the truck and I got to do a better job of securing it right there. I got to put some more ADO clamps in. Then it comes out through there where that grommet is. Then it comes, let me move the snow. Then it comes out there and then I got ADO clamps going up the truck and then underneath the soft top. Now here's, here's how I ended up mounting the uh, 246 and the 442. I used a heavy radio mount plate, just a standard, um, I don't know, generic plate, mounting plate, thick aluminum. And then I built uh, frames out of one inch square tubing. Then I, mo then I bolted those to this um, that aluminum plate. Let me get this out of the way. So there's my 244 and there's my 246. Um, I do have an intercom system in this, but right there is where the uh, 1078 would go. Uh, I had a short of my one of my cables that go to it from that intercom box that you, that you see up there to uh, that came down and this is where I would have mounted my 1078 which is your amplifier but that shorted out the circuit of the amplifier so I have to turn it in and get it fixed One thing about these five ton trucks is that they have no internal, let me put these headsets up here. They have no internal lighting whatsoever. So me being the person that I am, I decided I'm gonna install some internal some internal lighting and these lights here just are your typical map lights that you'd find on aircraft and stuff like that above nav on your navigation tables and flight engineers or pilots but as you can see these are for NVGs uh, they at night they put out a, a nice light it's not overly bright but if you happen to have a pair of NVGs with you, you could operate these. So these are NVG compatible. Okay, just let me let that hang down there and turn it off up here. Then the other set of lights I over installed uh, are these gooseneck lights that you normally would find on aircraft also. Everything in here, all these lights, are uh, mil spec. They're they actually are produced for the military. And um, oh, let me see if that's the one. Yeah. So I put a red light in there for at night because red doesn't affect your night vision. So if you want to use it to read maps or whatever, you can. So I installed one on this side, and I installed one on that side the other light i installed are these side lights right here and these are also aircraft instrumentation lights and uh you could adjust them up or down you know 
brighter dim. So they're, they're, a nice, they're a nice light to have right here, because if you need to read a, a map or anything, then you could read a map right there. Each side has one. There's one there, and there's one right there for the passenger side. And uh, let it focus in. Right there, one there for the passenger side. Then the other lights I installed were the FUD lights here for the instrumentation. There's your red lights. And then there's a red light down there. That one right there is red. And then if I go to white, there's only one white floodlight, and that would be that one right there. Okay. Then behind me, I installed these lights. One side is white, one side is red. This side is the red one. As you can see, it's red. And then you have your NVGs. Okay, they're mounted on this bar with ADOL clamps, and I guarantee you, you're not going to move them. I actually did a pull up on them, so you, uh, so they hold up to 300 pounds. They're not going anywhere. And the other side is the white light, just for the flood. These two here are the, for the speakers for the radio, and the radios do work. Uh, they're just not here for show. So let me turn on the radio. I don't know if you could pick this up or not. Let it warm up a little bit. I'll turn this one on down here. Let them, they gotta warm up. Some kind of a religious broadcast. Year after year, everyone who came brought a gift. Articles of silver and gold, robes, weapons and spices, and horses and mules. Solomon had 4,000 stalled for horses and chariots. And 12,000 horses, which he kept in the chariot cities. And also <laughs> so those are those radios, so they work. Then my CB radio. I gotta turn on my converter down here. You don't ever wanna split your batteries. Um, <clears throat> these are 24 volt batteries. I got four of them. But what they what a lot of people do, anything that's anything that's 12 volts, they'll just take off a, off a half the battery system and run it that way. When you do that, you have an unbalance in your in your electrical charging. And even running a simple radio, such as an AM FM radio, will put enough drain on half the battery system where the other half gets overcharged and you start burning up those batteries because they got to compensate to, to charge the other batteries. Uh, there's good articles online for that. But here's the uh, CB. Let's put it to weather. Oh, that's scan. I don't want scan. This is Noah Weather Radio WNG 660 in Gillette. The current time is 8.33 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time. On the regional weather maps, high pressure will slide across the area today with chilly temperature and decreasing cloud. cloudy in the morning then becoming mostly cloudy. So there's this radio. Highs in the mid-70s. Southwest winds 10 to 15 miles an hour increasing to 15 to 25 miles. This radio here is a ham radio. It has a, it's a quad. It has HF or VHF, HF, uh, your CB range, 10 millimeter range, and uh, some frequencies in HF. Uh, it's a cheap radio. It's only $85. But the reason I got it is because you have to have a a ham license to operate it to talk on it these two radios here these two military radios 
are in the frequency range and the power range where I have to have an, a uh, ham radio license. So I said, well, heck, if I'm going to get a ham, if I have to have a ham radio license, I might as well have all the frequencies covered. So I have HF, VHF, UHF, and uh, the 10 millimeter band for CBs. And here's the two speakers. Okay. But I had to make this overhead and it's, and it's bolted right here and it's just nothing but half inch tubing, just a square tubing. And then I have Adel clamps or hose clamps holding it on, but they're not on there that tight. So it gives a little bit of movement back here where it's not a rigid system. Uh, these are mounted on shock mounts those two radials right there plus they're electrically isolated because these since they're 12 volts they're getting there down here behind this box is a converter let's see if I can go down there and look show. right there that silver box is the converter Tw uh, 24 to 12 volts and it has its own uh, ground its own negative so when you do install 12 volt radios and 24 volt systems get the 24 volt down to 12 volt get the amperage that you need and electrically isolate these from the ground of the truck to its own ground on that converter um, if, if you hook up the converter and still have these electrically grounded to the frame of the truck then you burn up that radio because then you have a possibility of the ground of the truck overpowering the 12 volts that you split in your battery. This way, uh, coming out of that converter, the power will equal the, the ground. If that makes any sense, if you if you guys are have any electrical background, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, that's my overhead. Uh, there's my Tom Tom. Now that's the only thing I got that's running off 12 volts. I got a cigarette lighter adapter right here that I could plug in the Tom Tom. That's not going to draw enough to worry about because I don't use it all the time. I only do it if I'm going on long trips. Going to Alliance today to clean out my apartment. So. And then, uh, of course, as you've seen in the parade, there's my siren box. And there's the microphone for the PA system for it. This here is also, I believe this is 24 volts, or 12 volt system. But I only use it for a parade, so. I don't have to worry about draining of that battery because it's not in constant use. So that's it for the radio update in this truck. Like I say, I went overboard with the lighting. When you don't have lighting, then you go, you know how much of a pain in the butt it is. So then I went overboard. Let me go ahead and turn off these radios and uh, what I'm going to do with this with this thing is I have another AM FM radio which I'm going to go against what I just spoke about but I'm going to I have regular outdoor speakers I'm going to use and I'm going to see if it's feasible to have an AM FM radio in here if you're going to be able to hear it or not when you're going down the road. Because I tell you right now, it's noisy enough to where you have to wear these headsets. And uh, these are your standard uh, Army issue uh, headsets that you use for the intercom system. And what I do with the batteries, because as you can see, I took the bench seat out of this vehicle. And 
and the batteries that were underneath the bench seat here are located right here. They were up here. As you can see, I got new seats up here. There's the old driver seat that came out of this thing. That hydraulic shock is shot. It's like having, well, there's a shock absorber that doesn't work, so you get bounced around. So I had to order a new seat. And since I didn't like the batteries up here, I moved them down here. Um, and then here's what it looks like standing out side the truck. I got one more CB radio. I'm gonna mount it. I'm gonna mount it right, right there, because that one has a scan. I just want to get a really just a cheap old radio that I could just okay. Well, let me show you what's inside here. As you can see, I got regular four. They're the semi batteries that semi trucks use. <clears throat> They're not the regular square batteries that these trucks come with. But this side is all negative. The back side is positive. The reason I did that is because if I ever have to do any work on the battery, all I got to do is just take this cable and this cable off. And that totally um, de-electrifies the truck. So if I take my wrench and have to work in the back back there in the positive terminals, and if I touch the frame with it, uh, I won't have any arcing. If I had the positive up front, then you always have the problem with it arcing. So I put the positive in the back so I could deactivate the electrical system easier with these two cables than I can with the, if they were in the back. Okay.